Hey, I'm Joshua C. Newman. I've been working on a little voltage control system for modular synthesizers or circuit bending toys or whatever that's um, really simple. I know a lot of us started off doing this kind of thing with uh, homemade Vactrols with LEDs and light dependent resistors or photodiodes or whatever. Um, and uh, this seems like it takes a little step out of that and gives you a better response. I'm using a, uh, an unusual component here. It is a MOSFET. This is the 2N7000G MOSFET. So what I've got here is a potentiometer and a MOSFET. I have the pins, the drain and the source connected to the uh, power, the five volt power in this case, and the uh, wiper of the potentiometer. And that way it's acting like a variable resistor. And what's neat about MOSFETs is that they're voltage controlled resistors uh, as opposed to a regular transistor, which is current controlled. So this thing draws uh, literally no current unless something goes wrong. And I always put current limiting resistors on all my things because who knows what dumb decision I'm gonna make as I'm building it. But in principle, at least it shouldn't need one. So it has its center pin here going over to the uh, output of this uh, jack here. But right now, all that's happening is that we have a triangle wave coming in from my oscillator on the top, and at the bottom we have a uh, zero to five volt signal. Zero I have calibrated down to the bottom here, and it's uh, each square is about two volts, so we go about two and a half of those, and that's five volts. So what we can do now is take our oscillator, plug it in, and when we look back here, when we turn the pot knob, what we find as we go down is that signal coming in. You'll notice that it's a little bit smaller and it's cut off at the bottom. There are ways to get around that, uh, but if we're trying to do something really simple, we sort of have to uh, accept that. That above, uh, I believe this is going to be 3.2 volts, the, um, the signal from the potentiometer is louder. As we get down there, the peaks are louder than the uh, potentiometer's output. What's going on there is that there's a forward voltage to the transistor under a certain amount. Uh, I believe it's 0.8 volts. It just doesn't transmit voltage at all. So everything under this is a signal. So it's not a perfect replication of the signal, uh, but it will be a reliable um, result from an incoming signal. So I find this pretty exciting because the only real component here, even though I have some resistors on here, the only real component is this MOSFET. It's a field effect transistor, which is pretty great because that means we get to do this cool voltage control stuff with it. So what we're gonna do is we're going to bend the middle pin out and this is where we're going to get the input from our uh, voltage control system we're bending it uh, toward the flat side and then we're taking the other two and we're going to solder them between power and wiper just like that so we'll be able to take our uh, incoming signal there and then wherever the signal from the uh, potentiometer is going, that will take into account the signal coming from your voltage controller, your oscillator, your controller, keyboard, whatever the thing is that you want to do. So I'm going to do this the easy way. Uh, since we already have the potentiometer out, we're not soldering into something that's already on a circuit board or something. We're just going to tin the pipe. these, solder them right down, one for you, one for you, and there we have it. So now you should be able to voltage control anything you want. So to make this a little bit easier, if I were to be uh, soldering these parts together somewhere inside a board uh, or an existing thing, I might figure out where I want to uh, route this pin. Uh, but I'm going to give myself, in this case, a little bit of strain relief by putting a an S-curve in it. 
that way. I can move it around how I like it as I'm fiddling around with the thing. Now, of course, this might be happening from the uh, back, from the back of a circuit board, which means that you would have to uh, turn this around the other direction. You would take this and flip it around that away, so the flat side would be on this side, because the pin that these are going in is the part that matters. So it depends on how you're how you're attacking your particular weird kind of solution. Now, of course, there's some pros and cons to this technique. Uh, the big one, of course, is the uh, flat spot at the bottom of the signal. You can resolve that by adding in a forward bias if you know how to do that. And the other issue is that the peak doesn't come as high as you might like. You don't get all the way up to five volts of, of signal because of that, uh, the dropout at the bottom. So one of the really cool things though, is that uh, if you send this to high a signal, if you send it 12 volts or something, cause you don't know what you're coming out of, uh, it just clips and it even clips kind of gently um, because what happens is the transistor gets all the way to full on earlier so what it does where your triangle is coming in like this it just comes in steeper and then rounds out it gets more like a square wave uh, but nothing breaks and that's a really important part i suppose you could send enough in here the maximum voltage of these mosfets is i think might be 35 volts maybe it's 64 volts it's a lot more than you're probably going to get out of a synthesizer so I imagine if you worked really hard at it, you could catch fire to your art project, but um, uh, so one of the curious things about this is that the voltage that it's being powered by the, the uh, from the power pin to the gate here or the wiper of the potentiometer, that sets the scale here. So that means if you're sending a five volt signal, let's say you're sending it to an Arduino or this is just a regular Eurorack module, then uh, aside from the dropout at the bottom, they will scale directly. If though you're sending it to a uh, digital circuit, like a 3.3 volt digital circuit, then uh, what you'll find is that you'll want to scale your input with a voltage divider circuit, just two resistors that uh, allows only two thirds of the voltage to come in and then it'll scale normally. Another con is that the signal winds up having to be unipolar. You can't go into negative voltage with this. You can of course get a 10 volt swing if you wanted to, but you'll have to build additional circuitry to make sure that it, it does that uh, that whole thing. All right, I'm going to take it subsonic. Thanks a bunch. This project's been really neat, and uh, I look forward to seeing what uh, Teddy Ruxpin sounds like once you can voltage control him.